Amen. And I want you to go to the Lord in prayer with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. and We thank you. We thank you for your love and mercy, your grace that's so abundant. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that works in our lives, Lord. And I ask you tonight, Father, to bless your people. Draw them closer to you, Lord. And Father, I pray that you would anoint my heart, my mind, and my lips. That you would use me, Lord, to speak your word. And I thank you for it, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to go with me tonight. Praise his mighty name. Go with me tonight to the book of Ruth. El libro de Ruth. I think that's what they said in Spanish. Rutha. Rutha. Ruth. Amen. They didn't have a, a Spanish word. I think it was all the same in English and in Spanish. Ruth. Praise God. How many, how many desire the best God has for you? Uh, let me ask that question again. How many of you desire the best God has for you? Praise God. You, you got to. You, you, you have to if you're going to get anything from him. If, if you don't have a desire in your heart for more of what he has for you, then that's as far as your goal. You ain't, you ain't going to go no farther than you, what you are right now. All right? You got to desire more. You got to desire more. Now, I want to I wanna make mention to you, because we're going to get into this, that while God is taking you in this journey of life, to bless you, to mold you, to, to, to do everything he has to do so that you can receive everything he has for you and become everything he intends for you to be. Uh, you're going to go through good times and you're going to go through hard times. Uh, hello. Amen. Some people have an idea that if you come to the Lord, you'll never have a hard time, but that's not the truth. The truth is, you, you will have hard times. But how many know that we had them in the world anyway? We had hard times in the world. Look at your neighbor and tell them, we had hard times in the world. All right? We all had them. We had heavy times in the world. Hard, hard times. Amen? But after you're in the Lord for a while, you kind of forget what you went through. And the enemy sometimes will come and tell you, you know what, you, it, was, it was easier in the world than it is with the Lord, but that's not the truth. The Bible says that, that, that Satan is a hard taskmaster. He works you hard, man. He, he just takes everything out of you, man. And uh, uh, the, Lord, the Lord, the Bible says his yoke is easy. How many know his yoke is easy? You, you might have some problems, but the reason it's easy is because he's helping you with your problems, with your issues. Amen. So I want you to go with me to the book of Ruth. Amen. Go with me to the book of Ruth. And I want you to see with me tonight uh, the story of Ruth. And her sister and her mother in law, you know, and, you know, her father in law and her two sons, and they died. They died in Moab. Now, let me, let me go back a little bit with you on, on, on that area so you can get a good glimpse of what I'm talking about. Moab actually came out of Lot. Remember Lot, the one that was traveling with Abraham? He was going with Abraham, and, and they left uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. The, the angels pulled them out of there because God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, he did. He did destroy them. And the two daughters he had, amen, thought that the whole world had been destroyed. So they went, and they got their father 
drunk and they and they and they had sex with him and they both conceived sons from the father that's where the Moabites came from anybody with me that's where the Moabites came from they they were enemies of God and uh, Judah was going through one of those hard times Bethlehem they were going through a famine and and, and Naomi and her husband pick up stakes and they and they started taking off towards Moab, thinking that if they went from you know the, 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 the Bible says, well the meaning of Bethlehem is the land of plenty, the land of blessing. So can you imagine that that they left that to go to Moab? Where God was a blessing. Are you with me? You know, look up here at me. There are people that they begin to go through trials and problems in church. And the first thing they think about is going back to Moab. Back to the world. Back to the pig's pen. That's what we think. I'm going to go back over there. And how many know you'll never find nothing better there? Amen. How many know you'll never find anything better in the world? Amen. It just won't happen. And if, you, and if you just hang on, if you just hang on through the little famine or the little trial or problem you're going through, and you might, you might look at me today and say, but pastor, if you only knew what I'm going through, you would call it little. But see, to the Lord, to the Lord, it's simple. He's going to work it out. Give him a big praise. He's going he's gonna to work it out. But, but we make it huge. How many understand that? We make it huge. Amen. And uh, you know, we used to, well, I better not get in there. Amen. But anyway, uh, they left. They left Bethlehem. They left the land of plenty, the land of blessing. They left it because they started going through a famine and they went to Moab where it was cursed. How many know that the, the nature of people, human nature, is to always try to find the easiest way? Lo más simple. And I always tell the ladies, I always tell Becky, I always tell everybody, all the workers that work here, don't try to find the easiest way. Why do you always want to find the shortcut? You find the shortcut and you get lost. If you just, just take the road God puts you on. And, and you're going to get there. He's going to make sure you get there. Anybody with me? And, and, and I'll tell you, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. How many want to be blessed? Amen. Amen. So I want you to go with me. We're going to read this. We're going to read this and we're going to see what happened to them. Because there, there's several individuals involved here, but we're going, to, we're going to kind of dissect it a little bit. And then we're going to get into it. And it says, that, it says it like this in chapter 1. It says, in the days when the judges ruled... There was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem of Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He, his wife, and his two sons. Can you imagine? And the man's name was Emelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. And his two sons were named Mathelon, or Invalid, and Chilion, Pini. That, that was their names. And they went to the country of Moab and continued there. Now you've got to understand something. They went there. They left, they left the trial thinking they were going to find something better somewhere else or still going to find something 
you know, better in the world or back where they came from or where they lived at. And it didn't happen that way. It was worse. Anybody home? Now, now look at this. Look at this. Just go on. But Emelech, who was Naomi's husband, died. At least at Bethlehem he was living. But he went to that other place and he died there. How many know only Jesus can give you life? How many know Jesus is the only one that can give you life? And he's the only one that can take you to the blessing. Come on. It, it, no matter what hardship you face, no matter what trial you're going through, listen to me. You're going to come out all right. Come on, you're going to come out all right. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Give him a real praise. You're going to come out all right. Amen. Some people, when they start going through a trial, they think it's the end of the world. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. So just cool it. <laughs> Chill out. Wait a little bit. Amen. And look at this. But Emelech, who's Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Let's go on. And they took wives of the women of Moab. Now that's an important statement because imagine this. Imagine this. They went to the world to find what they needed. Let me ask you a question. How many people do you know that were serving the Lord? Or that still say they're serving the Lord, but they're in the world trying to find the answers for their life. And they still think they're serving the Lord. And, and you know there are people, listen, look up here at me. God is a good God because he deals with us. And, 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 and you know, for, for a season, he'll deal with you, man, to try to get you back. But, but when you don't make that turn back, listen to me, he just lets you go. And there are some people that believe that you're still saved no matter what you're doing. Dun, 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 dun. My name is Joe Friday. Listen, you can't live in Moab and reap the blessings of Bethlehem. It's impossible. Say it's impossible. You, you, you cannot live in both places. You got to let go of one and, and, and get the other. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. Amen. All right, are you with me? No podemos, no podemos, all right? Look at this. And they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpha, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they, and they dwelt there about 10 years. Can you imagine they were stuck in that area for 10 years. The Moabites used to worship, now listen to me, the Moabites used to worship a false god. This god, they believed, could only be satisfied by offering him children. They would kill children. They would offer him children as sacrifices. Aren't you glad tonight that your God never asked you for anything, never asked you to sacrifice nothing? All he did was he offered himself as that sacrifice. Oh, you better give him praise. Lift up that mighty name. And Mahlon and Chilion died also. Can you imagine? Ten years after the father died, they died in the world. They died. 
Have you ever noticed that in every funeral, any funeral you go to, everybody went to heaven? But that's not the truth. Most people, you got to be Christian. You got to be saved. You got to be washed in the blood. Anybody with me here tonight? Am I here by myself? Okay, look at this. Let's go on. Then she arose with her daughter in law to return from the country of Moab one day all of a sudden after going from one trial to another, hardships, starvation, I mean, getting beat up by the world, getting tormented, I mean, man, going in and out of jail, and all kinds of things were happening. I'm paraphrasing it for you. All right? I'm paraphrasing it, but I'm giving you a 21st century outlook of what that meant. Going in and out of the drug house. Standing on the street corner begging for money so that we could get a drink. You know, all of us were there. We were all in the world. You, your problem might have been different than mine, but you were there. And you saw it and you know what it was. And why anybody would want to go back to the world, I don't understand. It's hard for me to understand that. Why somebody would want to go back to the world, back to Moab. But let me get, a, let me get going with this. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. She woke up. Say she woke up. And it says... For she had heard in Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them food. Now here, here, here's the thing. Here's the, all of us, she's in Moab all those years suffering. I mean suffering. Her husband died there. Her two sons died there. Now she's left alone with two Moabite women. And how many of you have ever been, how many of you have ever thought, have ever, were, were, were saved? Now look, you don't have to answer, but I'm just, going to, I'm just asking this question. You can think about it. How many of you have ever looked back in your life and you thought, wow, man, look where God brought me from. Anybody here? Yes. Have you ever thought of the suffering and everything you went through? And, everything? and, 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 then, and then you compare it to right now and you'll find that man... What you go through now is nothing compared to what you used to go through. Give him a big praise. So she left the place where she was. Now look at this. Look at this. Mark that down. Highlight that part right there. Because we're going to get into something in just a moment. But she left the place where she was. She left that place where she was. She, she woke up. All of a sudden, she woke up inside. And she said, man, I, what in the world am I even doing here? I don't belong here. I can, I can, I can almost believe, thank you, sister. She, she, I, I can almost believe that she was, uh, uh, I mean, reminiscing of the blessings that, that, that her her, her, her relatives and the people she knew in Bethlehem were getting, and she was suffering. She was suffering. Now look at this. So she left the place where she was. She woke up all of a sudden. She said, man, what am I doing here? I need to get back to Bethlehem. I need to get back to where his blessing is. I need to get back to where I knew there was plenty. Come on. I, I need to get back, even though we, I went through trials and, and problems, and, and, but, but, but I knew that God would always meet the need. 
and it says her two daughters-in-laws with her and they started on the way back to Judah her two daughters like two Moabites two Moabites let's go on but Naomi said to her to her two daughters-in-laws go return each of you to her mother's house May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. And the Lord grant that you may find a home and rest each in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. And they said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband tonight and should bear sons. Would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it is far more better for me than for you that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. She realized, man, that she, was, she wasn't in the will of God. All right, let's go on. And they wept a lot again, and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Now look at this. It deals, it deals with the heart. The heart. Orpha never made up her mind. She was leaving that. To follow her mother-in-law to the blessing. There are some people, there are some people who, who, who just don't believe. They, they won't believe. They, they just won't come out of Moab. They can be around you. They can, they can even talk the scripture. They can do all kinds of things, but, but they won't get out of Moab. Anybody with me? And so, so, so she takes advantage. Orpha takes advantage of this opportunity. She says, man, I'm going back to, to the world. Because it never left her. It, I said it never left her. Listen to me. Listen to me tonight. You got to let it go. You got to walk out of it. You got to walk out of the world. You can't, you can't live in both sides. Anybody with me? The, the world today that you and I are living in, the church world that you and I are living in, believe that they can live in both sides. They believe that it doesn't matter, that God, does, that, that it doesn't matter, that God doesn't look at it. That God loves you so much that it that, that doesn't matter how you live. See, but, but what they don't understand is that Jesus Christ gave his life to change our lives. Amen. Give him a big praise. Amen. He gave his life to change our lives. To bring us out of Moab and bring us into the blessing. He didn't, he didn't die for you to keep you where you're at. He died for you to bring you out. Are you with me tonight? Praise God. Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So look at this. Let's go on. And they always said, See, your sister in law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister in law. Can you imagine? She knew where she was going. And she knew who she was going to go worship. But we can't do that. 
Look at, the, look at the one sitting next to him and tell him, you can't do that, bro, you can't do that. You've got to serve the Lord. You've got to live for God. Praise God. Let's go on. And Ruth said, urge me not to leave you or to turn back from following you. It was a hard decision. One of them decided to go back. She was willing to lose anything and everything God could ever have for her. And the other one decided to follow Naomi back to Bethlehem. Now you got to understand that Ruth was a Moabite. And when she would go to Bethlehem, she was going to be there with a lot of Israelites. And they were going to mistreat her. They were going to look down on her. They considered her a dog. They considered her the worst of the worst. But she was willing, listen to me, she was willing to go through whatever just to follow her mother-in-law in the ways of God. Give the Lord praise. And Ruth said, urge me not to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. What, now, now look up here at me, look up here at me. What an awesome statement. That was a powerful statement because she, look, look over here. She was telling Naomi her heart that she was willing to let go of the world, let go of the false gods in the world, let go of the false things people were doing, and all that, leave it all go to follow her God. Amen. That's an awesome statement she made. That was in her heart. That came from here. Not from here, but from here. The other one, she had the world been here. So she wanted to go back to the world. Anybody with me? Look at your neighbors sitting there. Look at them. Look at somebody, Connie. Look over here across the room. I ain't going back, man. I ain't going to Moab. I'm going to live for Jesus. Come on. I'm going to live for Jesus. What, what an awesome God. So, so here she comes. Here she comes. Let, let's find out. Let's go on a little further and then we'll go to somewhere else. All right? Because I want to take you somewhere with this. All right? Are you with me, church? How many want the blessing of the Lord? Amen. You know, you're going to find people out there that are always going to try to change your heart. They're always going to try to change your mind. They're always going to try to get you to believe that you can do both, live both lives, and still make it. And I'm here to tell you, you cannot. Boy, some of you look at it like you're sad because you can't. Man. You ought to be glad you can't. He wants to bless you. They can't even deceive. He wants to bless you. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome God. Amen. So look at this. She tells her this part of her statement to her. She says, where you die, I will die. 
and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Can you imagine? She says, I'm not letting nothing get in my way. Look at the other side of, uh, of you, the, another neighbor, and tell him, I'm not letting nothing get in my way. I'm going all the way with Jesus. I'm going all the way. All the way with Jesus. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going all the way with Jesus. There's no half-stepping. Come on, there's no half-stepping. How many of you know what half-stepping is? Huh? Well, find out. I don't got time to tell you right now. Let's go on. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she was determined. She was going to get out of Moab. She was getting out of the world. She was getting out of everything. Knowing, listen to me, knowing that where she was going, they might give her a hard time. But she had made up her mind that God, that the people of God were more blessed than the people in Moab. And she wanted the blessing. How many want the blessing? Come on, how many want the blessing? If you really want it, tell the Lord, Lord, give me the blessing. I want the blessing. Praise His mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Man, I'll tell you, we've gone through trials and problems and uh, you name it. You name it. We've gone through some heavy stuff. But God is good. I said, my God is good. Praise His mighty name. Amen. Praise His mighty name. There were times, man, I was, I was trying to, to figure out how can I get me an armor truck. I'm, I'm going to have to get me one of those cars that Donald Trump rides in right now. Bulletproof. Bombproof. Oh, brother. But it, it was exciting. You know what made it exciting? That the Lord was with me. Oh, give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's an awesome God. I think we used to sing a song like that, uh, Awesome God. Anybody remember that? Awesome God. We used to sing it, right? Uh, man, he's an awesome God. Now look, look at this. Let's go on. Verse 19. This. So they both went on until they came to Bethlehem. And, there, and when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred about them and said, Is this Naomi? Is she hanging around with the Moabites? Let's go on. And she said to them, Call me not Naomi. Pleasant. That was her name. Call me Mara. Bitter. Man, the world will tear you up. How many know the world will tear you up? Anybody here? Jesus, let me tell you something. Jesus will bless you. I'm telling you. He'll bless you. Look at this. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. She was hoping he would bless her in, in Moab. How could the Lord, the Lord's not going to bless you in the world. Help me, Lord. Let's go on. You don't want to hear the rest. Let's go on. Look at this. I went out fool. Can you imagine there was a famine? There was a famine in Bethlehem. And this is her declaration of her when they left. 
I went out full. I was full here, and I went to a place that tore me apart and made me empty. That heavy? I said, in that, if you've ever thought of going to the world, going back to the world, listen to me. Shake yourself loose. Shake yourself loose. Because you're going you're gonna, to, listen to me, the Lord's not going to live in the world. Listen, he's not going to live there with you. You've got to get out of the world. So it says, I went out full. Can you imagine? Look at that. I went out full. And when you read the first part, she says, we were in a famine. But she's declaring here. She says, I went out full, but the Lord has brought me home again empty. Fills you. Gives you. Blesses you. The world will, will destroy you. It will empty you out. It will take everything you thought you had. It will wipe you out, man. That's what it will do. Why call me Naomi since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab, and they, came to the, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Can you imagine? Right in time for the blessing. Say, right in time for the blessing. How many believe God wants to bless you? Amen. I want you to go with me. We're going to go to Philippians. Philippians. Chapter 3. <laughs> Verse 12 to 14. Let's read this. He says, this is Paul speaking. And he says, not that I have now attained this idea or have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold of or to grasp and make my own that for which Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has laid a hold of me and made me his own. He says, I'm not perfect, but I'm not going backwards. I saw a bumper sticker one day that said, I'm not what I used to be, but I'm not there yet. But I'm not what I was. How many believe that? You, you're not what you used to be. You're still heading forward. You're still going forward. God is still moving. God is still changing you. Come on. Come on. Anybody home? You're, you're, not, you're not going backwards. You're going forward. God is working on you. God is moving in you. This is what Paul is saying. He said, man, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not holding back, man. I'm not going back. Say it with me. I'm not going back. And I'm not going to follow those Christians out there that call themselves Christians that, that are in the world and try to claim Jesus. Come on. Come on. Look at me. Look up here at me. Tell me I'm not going to go to that. I'm going to serve the Lord. Come on, I'm not perfect, but He's working on me. Look at this. Let's go to verse 13. I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own. I haven't captured it yet. I haven't made it my own yet. But I'm working at it. Come on, I'm working at it. Come on, how many, how many here are working at it? 
you're working and making it your own. But one thing I do, it is by one aspiration. Can you imagine? Look at this. It is by one aspiration. It's one thing I have inside of me that I'm going to do. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm going back to drugs. I ain't going back to alcohol. I'm not going back to all that other stuff. I'm not going back there. Amen. Not perfect, but he's working. He's moving. Come on, he's moving in us. How many believe he's moving in you? I believe he is. And look at this. But one thing I do, that was his commitment. But one thing I do, it is my one aspiration. Forgetting what lies behind. And straining forward to what lies ahead. Underline that, that, that verse. Underline it. Underline it for yourself. And, and I want to tell you something. This is one of my favorite verses. This one, and I have another one in chapter 2. But this is powerful. How many know he wants to bless you? How many want to be blessed? You got to want it. He's not, he's not going to take it to you in Moab. Your friend might say you're going to be blessed in Moab, but God hasn't said that. Or you might think your friend is God. I don't know. But I'd rather let the Lord bless me. Are you with me? Yeah, give him praise. Give him praise. This is a good candy. How many of you have ever had a preacher preach and eat candy? See, you may want to believe that you can live two lives, but you can't. And you may not want to believe me. So the only thing I can tell you is We'll find out at the end. We'll find out at the end. I'll stick with Bethlehem. And you stick with Moab. And we'll see who gets there. I like what he says there. He says, I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet. I haven't, I haven't got there yet. I'm not perfect. I'm striving for it. I'm going for it. But one thing I do, that was his commitment. One thing I do, it is my one aspiration. It's the greatest desire I have in my heart. Forgetting what lies behind the past will always try to creep up on you. There was a man one day in a, in a junkyard. He had a sign, and I remember reading the sign. He had a sign up on top, you know, back of the, where he was at. He, they had a sign up there that somebody gave him, and he put it up there. And it, this is what the sign said. It said, when I do good, nobody remembers. When I do bad, nobody forgets. How many understand that? Amen. When I do good, nobody remembers. But when I do bad, nobody forgets. How many know that? How many know that the devil will always try to get you to remember? Where you were, what you were when you were back there, when you were out there in the world. Come on, look at your neighbor, Tom. Come on, don't let the devil lie to you. 
Anybody with me here tonight? He'll always try to, he'll always try to, to re remind you of how the dirty bum you were and, and the thief. And, and he'll always try to throw that at you. But Paul wrote here, now listen to me. Paul was accused of being a Christian killer. Nobody liked him. But Jesus saved him. Amen. And Paul was writing this verse. Come on, everywhere he went, they were trying to remind him of his past. And if somebody didn't remind him, he was reminding himself. The enemy made sure he'd never get that out of his mind. Are you with me, church? But I want to tell you something, when you're washed in the blood, I said when you're washed in the blood, you're washed in the blood. When you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Say it with me. When you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And sometimes, man, let me tell you, man, we just, we just can't get it out of us. But let me tell you something. You got to. Because if you don't get it out of your mind and your heart where you were before, if you don't stop reminiscing what, where you came out of, listen to me, eventually that will take you back. Anybody with me? I want you to write these things down. Okay, I got a few things I want you to write down. I wrote these things down and I want you to write them down. Because I want you to understand God loves you. God wants to forgive you, wants to lift you up. God wants to bless you. He wants to bring you out of Moab and put you in Bethlehem. He wants you to be powerful. He wants you to be blessed. Are you with me tonight, church? But the decision is yours. It's yours. Listen, don't follow the crowd. Follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, listen to me. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm already a witness of this. When you follow the Lord, nobody likes you. You, you have very few friends. You're walking in a narrow road, a bumpy road, because the road is wide to Moab, but the road to Bethlehem is narrow. Nobody wants to travel that road. Everybody wants to travel Moab. Everybody wants to claim two lives. There's no such thing, church. There's only one life. One life with Him. And so I want you to write this down. I want you to write these things down. I, I wrote these things down. Leave your past behind. Leave it. Déjalo ir. Leave it. No matter what anybody says about you, no matter what, what anybody thinks about you, no matter what, leave your past. Let it go. Let it go. Hello. Let it go. You can look at people that try to criticize you and say something to you. You can look at them and tell them, Jesus gave his life for me. You, it wasn't you, it was Jesus. Leave your past. Leave it. Leave it go. Forgetting, the Bible says here, forgetting in, 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 in Philippians 3, 13 or 14, 13, he says, leave your past. Leave it. Let me read it to you. I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet, but one thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting. Forgetting. What lies behind. Forgetting. What, what, what do you mean forgetting? Pastor, you know, are you going to just, it's going to erase from your, no. No, it's not never going to erase. But you're not going to live there no more. 
You're not going to talk about your past. You're not going to, you're not going to continue throwing it at, at everybody. You're not going to listen to me. You don't have a past. Somebody, somebody one time got invited. I had a girl that was coming to our church that was invited to a funeral. The Lord had delivered her. And she got invited to a funeral. And she was so afraid to go. And the reason was because everybody from her past would be there. And they would just throw her past at her. And she kept saying, I don't know if I should go. And so I sat down to talk to her. And, and I asked her, well, why, are, why don't you want to go? And she said, because everybody from my past will be there. And they're going to throw my past at me. So I asked her a question. I says, well, what past are you talking about? And she says, well, you know what I was. Well, I don't know what you were, I says. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she's looking at me because I knew what she did, what she was. I knew what she came out of. And she said, well, what, what are you doing? She said, what are you asking me that? And I says, because you don't have a past. <laughs> so why are you afraid? I said, why are you afraid to go to a funeral where there's people from your past when you don't have a past? The Bible says he takes your sins and he takes your past. He takes everything you were and he casts it as far as the east is from the west. And he casts it into the depths of the sea of forgetfulness. Never to remember it again. Never to remember it again. Never. Come on. Never to remember it again. When they tell you, do you remember when you were this? Tell them, no, I forgot that. The Lord said I didn't have a past. All I have is a future. Come on, tell them all I have is a future. Anybody here? All I have is a future. What an awesome God. I said, what an awesome God. See, the only way you can say that is if you get out of Moab like Ruth did and go where the blessing is and live there. Oh, nobody likes that. Come on, let me say it again. How many like that? How many like to, how many want the blessing? Let me see your hands. You want the blessing. Everybody wants the blessing. How many want to get out of Moab? Amen. Well, give the Lord a big praise. Oh, give him a big shout. Come on, scare the hell out of the devil. Just forget it. Forget it, you don't have a past. What are you doing there? Hello. You know what, I thank God. I thank God every day, every day, every day. I thank God. That he takes my sins and he casts them as far as east is from the west. I thank the Lord that, that his blood never loses its power. I thank the Lord that as long as I don't go back to Moab, as long as I go forward, even if I just take one step, you know, forward, take that step forward. Listen to me. Keep going forward. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I said you're going to make it if you keep going forward. If you go backwards, you're going to fall. You're not going to make it that way. Can I say something to you people? Stop trying to please your family that doesn't know the Lord. Stop trying to please friends that don't know the Lord. Listen to me. They're, they're going to get you to go back to Moab and they're going to drag you down. Listen to me. You are serving Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God who gave His life for you. You're not, you're not, come on, you're not playing church. This isn't a place to play church. Hello. This is, this is real. Come on, say it with me. This is real. Hallelujah. So look at this. You got to make a decision. Number one, you got to make a decision. 
Make a decision. God, God cannot do that for you. You got to do that. You have to do that. You've got to decide. You're not going to live in Moab. You're not going to go back to the trash and to the, to the drugs and the alcohol and all that. You're not going back to the world. Come on, you're not going back there. You were called out of the world. You were called out of the world. Listen, you did not save yourself. You did not choose Jesus. Jesus chose you. He brought you out of the world. He brought you out of the world to make you his own. Come on, he brought you out of the world. You couldn't save yourself. There's not a single person in this world that can save themselves. He called you out of darkness. He brought you into his marvelous light. He called you by name. He brought you out of darkness. And he knows what you're made out of. He knew what you were carrying. And he said, come to me and I'll change you. Come to me and I'll take it off of you. Keep walking with me and very soon you're going to be just like me. Keep going forward. Do not go backwards. Come on, give him praise. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. It all belongs to him. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Some of you, yeah, give him praise, give him praise. Some of you, some of you, man, don't understand. But I remember, I remember when I got saved... I was, man, when I got saved, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And I was, I was living with my daughter's mother. I had been saved two weeks. And I would go to church, man, I was enjoying church, man, the presence of God. One, one Wednesday night, I, I got home, it was probably about 10, 10 o'clock at night, 10.30, I got home. And I was singing, there is power, power, wonder working power. Man, I was, I was, man, I was floating. And she's sitting there with the lights dimmed, drinking her alcohol and doing her dope, playing her, her music, you know, that, 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 that music that tears you down. And she looked at me, I walked in and she looked at me and she says, you gotta make a decision. She said, it's either me or God. And I guess because I'm standing here, you can, you can, you can know what I chose. Hey! Give it praise! Give it praise! Lift up the name of Jesus! Hallelujah. And I was, man, brother, I had a lot of work he had to do, man. I mean, man, my God. A lot of work. Thank God. Thank God he's good. Look at this. Proverbs 23, 7. Let's go there real quickly. They were coming back to this. Proverbs 23, 7. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. And he says it like this. He says, For as he thinks in his heart, 
so is he. As a person thinks in their heart, that's what you're going to go do. That's what you're going to be. If you got your heart set on the world, that's where you're, that's where you're going to live, brother. That's what you, you can call yourself a Christian all you want to, but that doesn't make you a Christian. Hello? I said, hello. What makes you a Christian is that you live your life for Christ. Say, live my life for Jesus. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As one who reckons, he says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you, but is grudging the cost. How many know, how many know that if you don't get the world out of your heart, the world is going to take you down. Everybody's just looking at me. If you don't get the world out of your heart, the world is going to take you down. Te va a para abajo. Write this down. Forgetting doesn't mean I have amnesia. Who's that? What? Thank you, Lord. Amen. What's your name? I don't remember. God is good, isn't he? Doesn't mean you have amnesia. It means you refuse to live there again. not a part of you. I, I wrote it down right here in a napkin look. Somebody one day asked me, can I have your notes? And I gave him a little paper like that with some scriptures. I said, yeah, you can have them. Is that all you got? I said, yeah, that's all I got. But I choose, I don't have amnesia, but I choose to dwell on my future with Jesus. Hello. How many believe you got a future with Jesus? Amen. Amen. How many believe you got a great future with Jesus? A powerful future with the Lord. Yeah, if you do, give him praise. Give him a big praise. Now look at this. Write this down. Our thoughts become our words. Okay? Our thoughts become our words. And our words become our actions. Our actions become our habits. And our habits become our character. That's why some of us can't get out of there, man. We just... Thank you, Lord. And our character becomes our destiny. That's where it's going to take us. Anybody with me? I'd rather, I would rather, man, put my thoughts on my future with the Lord. I would rather believe the word of God than to believe anything else. Now I want to tell you something. There's not a soul in this room, not including myself or these pastors or any of us. We've all messed up somewhere but we've learned. I know, I know that most pastors on the TV ain't going to tell you that, but if you sit down with them for a day or two, you'll find out, man, these people are messed up. (laughs) 
Now write this down. God does not assault or consult. God does not consult your past. God does not consult your past to determine your future. How many know he doesn't consult? He doesn't go to your past. Do you think I should make this man an evangelist? Do you think I should make him a preacher? You know, look at his past. God doesn't do that. So you got to make that man an usher to stand right there in front. He don't do that. He don't go to your past to find out whether you should, he should put you in a certain thing. He already knows what he's doing. Amen. How many know God already knows what he wants to do? Yeah. He already knows what he wants to bless you with. Come on. He already knows what he wants to. Come on. Give him praise. Tell him, Lord, I thank you. So look at this. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. This is what, what really, really uh, is heavy duty about this. Because look what he says here. He says, I press on. I press on toward the goal. I press on toward the goal. I go forward. I push forward. I press on. Toward the goal. Say toward the goal. I push forward. Look at the person sitting next to the town. Come on, you got to go forward. You can't stop. The enemy is going to try to push you backwards. You keep pushing forward. You keep going forward. Don't tell yourself you can't. You just keep walking. He, this is what Jesus said. He says, when you think you're weak, he says, oh, you'll be strong. Because that's what he's strong. That's what he gets in it. Come on, you can make it. Look at your neighbor and say, we can make it if we want to. We can be everything we need to be for him. I can't. That's right. I can't do it tomorrow. I don't want to try, but I just can't do it tomorrow. No, no. Get out of that. That's where the devil has you. Tell the devil, today I serve you. Notice you're getting out of my mind. You're getting out of my heart. And I'm kicking you out. And I'm going to stand up for Jesus. Come on. I'm going forward. Jesus. Adelante. One time I met this Puerto Rican preacher. <laughs> and he tells me, you need to go to Puerto Rico. I said, for what? He said, so you can see what those preachers are like. I said, well, what are they like? He says, they don't have no neutral and they have no reverse. No park. So what in the world do they have? Do they have a car? <laughs> and he says, they only have drive and overdrive. Man. That's all they got is forward, never backwards. Man. Amen? Look at your neighbor, Tom. You ain't got no, no reverse or park or none of that. Come on, all you have is Forward. Press forward. Press in. Keep going. No matter what problem comes your way, no matter what trial you're facing, God is with you. He's going to help you. Keep pushing forward. Keep going forward. You're going to make it. You're going to have the blessing. Come on. You're going back to Bethlehem. You're not staying in Moab anymore. You're getting out of there. Yes. He's got it all for you. Praise his mighty name. I said praise his mighty name. So he says, I press on. I press on toward the goal. I press on towards the goal. You can't, you, listen to me, you can't hang on to the back luggage you had and press forward, you got to let go of what you, what you carried. You got to let that go and go forward. Say forward. forward. Not backwards. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Praise the Lord. I press on toward the goal. For what? To win. Say to win. No, no, no. Say it with, with, you know, con poder. Come on, con power. Say it with power. I press toward the goal to win. I'm going to win. Come on, say it. I'm going to win. The devil says you'll never make it. Jesus said you will. Who are you going to believe? I said, who are you going to believe? What a mighty God. He says, I, I press on toward the goal to win. To win the prize. Naomi didn't get nothing in Moab. You heard her testimony. When I left here, I was full. Now I'm coming back empty. I thought Moab was going to give me everything I needed. But I'm coming back empty. I don't have nothing. I left full. You'd be surprised how many individuals think that if they can live two lives, they're going to make it. You'd be surprised how many individuals don't even care to live two lives. They go all the way back. But they're left empty. They don't have nothing. He strips them. The devil will strip you of everything. Is there anybody with me? Amen. And so Paul is talking here and he says, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing forward. I'm not going to let the devil take me backwards. I don't care who don't like me. I don't care who talks about me. I don't care what they say. I'm going to press forward. I'm going forward. I said I'm going to press on. I'm going all the way. There's nobody going to make me turn back. I'm going all the way with Jesus. Come on, is there anybody here today that can say I'm going all the way with Jesus? I press on towards the goal. I'm going down, man. What? I'm going to win. I'm going to be a winner. Come on. I'm going to be a winner. Look at your neighbor and tell him, aren't you tired of being a loser? Aren't you tired of giving in to the devil? Come on. Tell him I want to be a winner. No matter what hardship I go through, I know at the other end I'm coming out on top. Yes. I said yes. Hallelujah. Praise his mighty name. Stop following the crowd. Stop following. You know they're not saved. You know they're backslidden. You know they're not serving the Lord. Why are you listening to them? Get into the word of God and press forward. Press forward. Tell them I can't live in Moab. I was here too long. I'm not going to stay there. I'm going out of here. I'm going back to the blessing. I want to live with Jesus. Come on. Is there anybody here today that can say I'm going to live with the Lord? <laughs> too many, too many individuals are being deceived. But the reason they're being deceived is because they still had it in their heart. You got to get rid of it. The world will never bless you and the world will never love you. And every time you show your face there, the devil knows you've been in church. They know that you, you knew the Lord. And when they see you, they're going to do everything they can to make you sorry you ever left them. Why do you want to go back to the world? I said, why would you consider even serving the devil for a moment? The world will never be your friend. Anybody that has the world as a friend is an enemy to God. 
I'd rather be a friend of God because he owns everything there is. There's nothing he don't own. Come on, every blessing comes from God. Every good thing, he said, comes from above. It all comes from above. Nothing comes from beneath. I press on. I press on toward the goal to win. I want to win the supreme and heavenly prize. I want to win the prize. He's got something powerful for me. What he's got for you may be different than what he's got for me. What he's got for each one of you, man, let me tell you, you could never get it in Moab. You could never get it in the world. Nothing. The world will never bless you. The world will curse you. Come on, are you with me, church? The world will leave you empty. And she said it. Naomi said it. I left full and came back empty. I don't have nothing to show for it. Nothing. Is there anybody with me here today? Stop believing those people that want you to lose everything God ever gave you. Stop it. Get into the Word of God. Believe the Word of God. Believe the Word of God. Don't believe all that other junk. Come on, you can have a couple. The Lord don't care if you drink. The Lord don't care if you get high. Come on. The Lord is okay with all that. No, brother, let me tell you something. You came out of there. Come on, you were a mess there. Every one of you were a mess there. I was a mess there. Come on, anybody with me here today? Why in the world would I want to go back to the mess? Don't let the world lie to you. You hang on. God's going to bless you greater than what you ever thought you could be blessed. God's going to lift you up. Come on, are you with me? Your family, your friends that thought that you were crazy, they're going to look at you and they're going to say, man, you know what? I want what you got. And you're going to have to look at him and tell him, you got to get out of Moab if you want what I got. Hey, Hallelujah. Praise His mighty name. You can't get it no other way. No puedes. No puedes. You'd be surprised how many Christians think you can have one foot in the world and one foot outside into the church. No. Just like you can't hate, you got to love. Anybody home? I said, anybody home? I said, anybody home? He says, I press on. I press on. It's not easy. Why do you press on? Look, come on here. This is why he had opposition. He's pushing in. And this, you push this way. And he's pushing in. And this guy's pushing this way. And this is what he's doing. He's going this way. But he knows that at the other end of that, he wins the prize. Yes! Praise His mighty name. I said praise His mighty name. I said praise the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. There's nobody like Jesus. Come on, there's nobody like the Lord. Look at this. Reaching forward is a, is a part of your thinking. Say, my stinking thinking has to go. The way you thought before has to change. The world cannot be part of you. Your mind has to change. got to change. And I have to think new thoughts. I can't think like the world. I can't think like the world. The, wor the Lord took me out of there. 
Now I gotta think like him. Now I gotta start thinking like him. I gotta, I gotta start thinking better than that. Come on. Who's shutting me off here? Look at this. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Go there. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Praise God. 8 and 9. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemingly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh on and take account of these things Fix your mind on them. Stop talking about the world. The world don't bless you. Talk about Jesus. Talk about, talk about how much he loves you. Talk about where he brought you from. And how far you've come in Christ. Forget the world. The world's not going to bless you, I'm telling you. The, the world is, is going to leave you empty. It'll never bless you. Talk about the things that bless you. Talk about where God is taking you. Talk about you're excited about what he has ahead for your future. I told you a while ago when I was two weeks in the Lord two weeks and I had to make my first decision whether I would serve the Lord or not two weeks but back then I never thought I'd be here never I never pictured myself doing what I'm doing but God had this all in his plan and the more I pressed in, anybody here? Yeah. The more he revealed. Yeah. The more he led. I had a, I had a bunch of guys that, that I knew, some were from San Luis and some from New Mexico and that. that but when I got saved, they got upset. My house was a party house, man. It was a drug house. They got upset when I got saved. And, and they started betting. They, they started betting on me. They said, he will make it three months. He'll be back. The church that I was attending where I got saved, they were betting I wouldn't make it either. Can you imagine? They had no faith. But I had an experience with God. Man, that experience was, was heavy. <sighs> and they would knock at my door once a month. I was living with my sister. We were living in Brighton. And they would knock on my door. And they, would, and, and they wouldn't come in. I'd invite them in and they wouldn't come in. They would say... Hey, are you still, uh, you know, are you still? I said, yeah, I am, I'm still. <laughs> and after about a year, they gave up. And little by little, I started getting some phone calls. 
these guys were calling me for prayer. They were going to the penitentiary. and They're all dead now. All of them. And I'm still here. Yeah, give him praise. Give Jesus all the praise. Look at this. Go back to chapter three. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with this. I want I want you to I want you to write this down. Pressing towards the goal. What does it mean to press towards the goal? To press means to resist. Resist that which would hinder you or stop you from moving into your destiny. Resist. 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 Listen, in, in the church, some of you, some of you, you, you won't go back to drugs or alcohol, but the devil will try to use gossip and slander and backbiting. And, and you've got to stop. You gotta stop. Because you cannot go forward with that in your heart. No puedes. Gotta let it go. You gotta get out of that. Jesus didn't call you into his kingdom so you could be gossiping and slandering and backbiting. He called you so you could be powerful in him, full of the Holy Ghost, being a light to the world. All that other stuff is the devil. Look at, your, look at the person sitting next to you. Look at him and tell him, come on, you've got to stop all that. You can't be a gossiper, a complainer, a, a backbiter, a slanderer. You can't do that. You can't do that. Amen. God, look over here. God never called you to know everybody's business. Amen. Never. He didn't call you to know their business. He called you to serve him. He called you for that. Get out of there. You're going to stagnate. You're going to stagnate. You're going to lose. You're going to lose out with God for that. With that. Get out of that. Sácate de ahí. I always tell people, if you have something to say to me, come and tell me, man. But you got to stand there too and hear what I got to say. How many know it's a two-way street? Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. That's why that, that Facebook is dangerous, brother. You, you know everybody's business, everybody. Man, there's Christians. They say they're Christians. I don't call them Christians, but they say they're Christians. And, and they're sitting there with a Budweiser here and a joint in the other hand and bless, praise the Lord. You know, brother, brother, when they go to hell with all that, brother, they ain't going to be praising the Lord. All that's going to cause them to miss it. We got to live for God. Look at your neighbor. We got to live for God. How many believe we got to live for God? 
No, you don't believe it. We got to live for God. Yeah. Pastor, you got to get a Facebook so you can be my friend. I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to know what you're going through. I don't want to know what the whole world's going through, brother. I, I, all I know is that I just want to know what Jesus is doing. Praise God. Anybody here with me? How many really want the blessing? You really want it. If you don't want it, that's up to you. I mean, that, I'm going to take, I'll take what's yours. I want it. I want to have Sister Becky come. Praise God. I don't know how this got down here. On mine? But it went up. Praise his name. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to invite you all to come. I'm going to invite you all to come. Come. I want you all to come. Come forward. Forward march! Haley Kaylee is back from Bible school. Amen. And uh, thank God, here pretty soon I'm going to have her preach on a Wednesday night. And I want her mother sitting in the front. Coming up, coming up. Vincent. Praise his mighty name. How many want the blessing? There's, there's a scripture, they can put it up there. And in Titus chapter 2, I think, from, I think it's verse 10. Is that Titus? 10 uh, they'll go up uh, let me see try 310 110 I mean 110 110 I bet it's a 110 go up to verse 6 give me my Bible I know it's in Titus. How many love Jesus? <laughs> Chapter 2, verse, verse 11. Okay, we're going to read verse 11 on down. And, I, and I'm, I'm what most, this is what most people will tell you. Well, I'm saved by grace. So they think that grace gives them the right to do wrong. But I want you to read this. Because this is what grace is for. This is what it's for. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? It says, for the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward or appeared for the deliverance from sin 
and the eternal salvation for all mankind. Let's go on. He has trained us. This grace, God's grace, will train you to reject and renounce all ungodliness, irreligion, and worldly passionate desires to live discreet, temperate, self-controlled, upright, devout, spiritually whole lives in this present world. Let's go on. Awaiting and looking for the fulfillment, the realization of our blessed hope, even the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now look at, give me up there, up there in the booth, give me the old Amplified Version. The old one. And go back to verse 11. Okay? For the grace of God, His unmerited favor and blessing has come forward, appeared for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind. Okay? He's not going to leave you in it. He's going to deliver you from it. Anybody with me? Están conmigo? Let's go on. Verse 12. It has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness and worldly passionate desires to live discreet, temperate, self-controlled, upright, devout, spiritually whole lives in this present world. Why? Let's go on. Let's go on. Awaiting and looking for the fulfillment, the realization of our blessed hope, even the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One, who gave himself on our behalf that he might redeem us, purchase our freedom from all iniquity, and purify for himself a people to be peculiarly his own, his own people who are eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is good and filled with beneficial deeds. Oh, these things urge, advise, encourage, warn, and rebuke with full authority. Let no one despise or disregard or think little of you. Conduct yourself and your teaching so as to command respect. How many know he's coming back soon? Ahí viene, ahí viene. He's coming. He's coming. I can guarantee you that there are some of you standing right here. Don't believe it. You can read the word and you still won't believe it because see, others have told you different, but they haven't been able to prove it. But I'm proving it to you through the word. And he says, if you, will, if you will follow me, I'm going to bless you. How many want his blessing? Do you know that when he pronounces a blessing on you, no one, not even the devil, can take that blessing away from you? What an awesome God. Are you with me? Anybody home? Yes. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands. And I want you with your own words to tell the Lord, Lord, I want your blessing. And I want to live for you. I'm not perfect yet, but you're taking me there. And so I'm not going backwards. I refuse to go backwards. I refuse to go backwards. I'm going forward. I'm going to live for you, Lord. You are the answer to my life. There is no other answer. He is the answer. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Yeah. 
give me an usher over here. Give me that lady over here. Come on here. Stand right here. Hallelujah. Where's Yvette? Come on here. Hallelujah. Give me that over there. The Lord is good. Where is she? The Lord is good. They want to do surgery on her, on her head, and it, it's a real heart surgery. But I believe God wants to heal her. Do you believe that? I want you to lift your hands right now. I want you to pray for her right now. In the name of Jesus, we command her brain to be made whole, completely whole. All disease, all infirmity, all affliction to leave her body. Leave her brain right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray. Come on, pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your blessing. Pray. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm coming back to Bethlehem. Lord, I'm going all the way with you. I'm going to Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Call upon his mighty name. Call upon His mighty name. He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on here. Hallelujah. Say, Lord. Say it with me. Lord, you're my healer. And by your stripes, I am healed right now. And I take authority over this neck problem. I command it to be healed. 